Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes. He should be president of the United States, but it's Cuss Corner, it's Cuss Corner. Cuss Corner, hee <laughs> Usually this is when Tim chimes in. Yeah, I was surprised he didn't jump directly in to, to say some sort of lie about how it's named something different. Which might actually be why I didn't see Cust Corner on any of the shows of the decade. I am, because I am there's so shocked. much controversy about what this show is actually called. Like people had people like it's it's not good with SEO, is what you're saying? Because yes. people are out there throwing other stuff at it. I would that's I would hurting think its searchability. The only reason I could think why it wouldn't appear on such a as part of such a select group of shows. Well, I mean, there are shows that appear on some of these lists that only have like eight episodes. This is Cust Corner twenty two. Wow. Coming in. Do you know who the star of this show is? I do. It's me. And other people on the show is Tim Undergust! Tim Undergust. That is not my name. It's also not the name of the show. A lot of people have been calling it more and more recently. Top Cat Corner, Top Cat's Corner, TC's Corner, TK's <laughs> Corner. There's been a, like a lot of names for this. And I've actually been enthused by it. That the name that you've sort of rice with the sobriquet you attach to it is sort of fading by the wayside. And the, the, the people are, are rallying around its real name. TC's corner. I, well, TK corner would just be the 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 TK is used either TK or TK 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 is used for insert name after the fact. Like if you're writing a script or you're writing anything instead of using like XXX, because that would just look like pornography. It's true. That's what I used to do. People are like, "Why are you writing about porn?" It's like, "No, nah, it's a placeholder." So it's a placeholder name if you use TK Tim. Maybe I just leave a blank space and highlight it yellow. Okay. Good to know. XXX so would be a lot better for SEO, just saying. That That's true. It's not a lie. Not a lie. So, I mean, Cuss Corner 30 is going to be popping. <laughs> well, it'll just be a... We'll ask Tim about his favorite porn. I was going to say, it's why we've been saving time. Tim's hot porn takes. Got to wait at least another couple months. We all know Tim loves hentai. Is that what's I can called? see that. Is that what's called? Hentai? I believe that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. I mean, I'm bad. I'd be curious to see how Tim pronounces it. Yeah, Tim, uh, are you like big the, on hentai? The, the, anime, the anime sex? Yes, the anime sex. Oh, yeah, that's hentai. Oh, my gracious. I had never... Oh, my gracious. Well, search it. You can... No, I don't want to. It sounds like he needs his fainting couch. So, Merry Christmas to everyone out there, by the way, or happy... Does Hanukkah last till Christmas time? I don't, I don't know this? if it overlaps this year. This year it does overlap. Okay, I believe it starts on the 23rd. All right, so a... Happy Hanukkah, a crazy Kwanzaa to everyone out there. What does Scientology do? Uh, Happy Tom Bruce Day. I guess. Bilk you, you out of your money. And, well, that, obviously. Oh, now we're going to get canceled and sued in England. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll sue you, buddy. I'll sue you in England. Anyway, happy holidays, everyone. Hope you're having a safe holiday. You probably got some time to kill because, as we all know, being around your family is just the fucking worst. Yeah, a lot of driving this time of year, too. A lot of driving, yeah. Uh, my wife and I actually go, like, her... It turns out, I mean, we met here, but we're both from the same general area, just yeah. an hour away, which tends to be three hours away by flight from here. Just crazy how that worked out. So there's a lot of driving back and forth and an inclement weather. You know, take, like, an hour because she drives like a coward. She's not remember, gunning it. She's not gunning it in the snow. Like remember maybe. a couple of Christmases ago when we were driving out to your mother's cabin and the car didn't have the wheel alignment correct and you had to fight it the whole way on the highway? I sure do. My mom finally got a new car. This is four years later, and she never got that corrected. <laughs> she lent it to me last year. It didn't start after I used. Like I, it died like on the highway. I was like, you, you're get a new car. Like you got That's a new like car twenty needed. years ago. It's like the time she gave you a car and it worked one day and then you had to leave it outside a friend's yeah. way. Great gift. It actually cost me more money to get it towed to the junkyard. Yeah. My mom, real, real nice gal. <laughs> Great with the gifts. She's just trying to get me stuck in the middle of nowhere. She wants me to start in like the hills have eyes or last house on the left or something like that. There's a lot she's, of life lessons. She's in setting those me up in one of those situations. There you go. It's parenting. I guess so. Tough love. So we generally throw this out to Tim for his topics. But first, Tim, over the holiday season, I know that you have become Keto Tim. Oh, well, that, that is true. I have started the Keto. That is correct. Do you think that you can keep it up throughout the holiday season? Because I'm going to wager that no one can. Yeah, I mean, it depends what you mean by keep it up. If I break for like Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and get right back at it, sure, I can do that. It's kind of what I was, that's kind of what I'm planning on. 
uh, sort of stress testing it until Christmas Eve, and then assuming things work okay, continue on as soon as Christmas Day is over. So how is it going so far? Remarkably well, I have to say. Uh, you know, I, the benefit of this diet is that the things you can eat uh, are things that I love. Uh, proteins, green vegetables, uh, cheese, uh, Diet Coke, water, <laughs> coffee, uh, black tea. These are all the things that I love uh, a lot. Sigs. So, yeah, well, cigs are calorie free on any diet. So, if anything, they help you lose weight. Yeah. It's, it's something that I can envision myself sticking with longer than most because I rather like the stuff uh, that I'm at. And it also, just by the nature of the food you eat, you also consume significantly fewer calories than, well, at least than I would usually too. So it has that double effect where, you know, you're, eat, you're consuming fewer net calories and you're f- eating fewer carbs. Well, I wish you the best of luck. On like this I try to stay guys. below below 20 a day and I haven't come close to 20 yet. You know what you need to get into? Cauliflower rice. I already had that. It's good. It tastes just like regular rice. Damn. No, it's it's terrible. But I ate it because, and I threw a little tiny bit of Tabasco on it, and it was fine. I mean, that's really the key to rice, is it's just a conduit for whatever condiment you happen to put on it. Yeah. That's sort of just how it works. I eat cauliflower rice all the time. I'm even on keto. I was going to say, this seems like it, it does... It would be a good diet for Tim to stick to, just because I feel like Tim is the kind of person who could just eat like a baked chicken breast and plain. broccoli. Plain I mean, this is really going to hurt his uh, favorite dessert of a slice of bread and dip in water. <laughs> well, you still have the water. Why must you dip things in water? <laughs> it, I like doing that. Oh, but only sparkling water. God. Cookies. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of stuff. It just disintegrates. Toast, bread, cinnamon rolls. I've dipped them all in sparkling water. Well, you can't have any of these things anymore. Nope. I feel like this is really going to hurt your fast food game. Well, yeah. I mean, the only thing you can really have are the places that use real lettuce that you can get your hamburger wrapped in that lettuce. So Wendy's, A&W, places like that. You can get your normal sandwich as long as you take off the bad condiments uh, and use lettuce as your bun. Well, oh, my pa- God. That sounds, that sounds awful, doesn't it? Yeah, listen to you, Mr. Millennial. Listen to your diet. <sighs> but you know what? If it works, it works. And, uh, you know. I'm a man who changes his opinions when the facts change. And I've seen enough and know enough people to swear by it, to know that it's worth giving it the, uh, the old college try. Well, let's, let's speak to the inventor of the keto diet, Paul Shaughnessy. You had your hand raised. What would you like to say? Oh, I, was, I just wanted to pledge my support for Tim in his, uh, in his keto journey. But I did want to say that like his, him being the face of you know, fast food culture, for the Pat Mayo experience, it's going to take a bit of a hit because when you, like, say if you're like, oh, Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich is awful. People are like, you can't even eat Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. So yeah. your, your, your is opinion that- is kind of void. Is well, It's, it's really going to no be the tough part was, about this. It's really no different than it was before. I didn't eat the chicken sandwiches because I didn't like them. And now I don't eat them because they go outside of the carbohydrates. So I wasn't eating them before. I'm not eating them now. There's no big difference there. I would also right. say the the amount and the wealth of knowledge on fast food of like the three most common guests on this show being Tim, me, and Jeff, Mm -hmm. there's still a lot of fast food like content and eating to go around. I don't think we'll be lacking in that department anytime soon. Well, I'm, listen, Mrs. Skinner knew everything there was to know about cakes, even though she didn't (laughs) eat cakes because she didn't care for sweets. She still knew them inside and out. (laughs) Forgot about that. What episode is that from? Uh, what is that one from? Is, is it the one where Skinner's dating Krabappel and Bart has to like watch Skinner's mom to distract her? Maybe. Oh um, yeah, and she just tells her inane stories. This is a lady Baltimore cake. You're going to have to lick my thumb. I have very little saliva left. Why can't I turn the page? No. <laughs> All right. Christmas cust corner topics, Tim. Let's hear the first one. So this year in particular, there seems to be this new trend developing, and I don't really know where it came from, but I suspect it's millennials. So you? There's, this, there's been a big increase in the use of real Christmas trees, and in particular, this I have to cut down my own Christmas tree nonsense. This seems to have been a boon in the last few weeks or so, because you've got a bunch of silly millennials who want to get on the Insta on pano mode on their phone to take photos of themselves chopping down their own Christmas tree like the adult adulting people that they are 
and, you know, dragging their dirty Christmas tree out of the wherever they're chopping it down and bringing it home. You know, we live in a society where, you know, you go to a Lions Club or a local a place where they have all the trees cut down for you. You can go there, you can pick out your tree and take it home. You don't have to make a whole adventure out of it so that you can spam your Insta account with all the photos you have of, take, of you chopping down your Christmas tree like your Clark Griswold. I think it's inane. I think it's silly. I don't know when this new trend sort of like picked up steam, but I think it's a bad trend. And I would rather have an artificial tree than one that I chopped down myself so that people can see me in my faux plaid shirts, uh, you know, on pano mode on my phone. I, it's so dumb. I can't stand it. Uh, and I just think it's an awful trend. I have two questions about this. Well, one question and one comment. What do you think pano mode is on your phone? When you flip your phone to the side and take photos, because you're taking the panoramic shot rather than the up and down shot, like you taught me. Never film anything up and down on your phone. Film it side to side, the pano way. Okay, so that's not what no. panoramic mode is on your phone. Swing and a miss. Yeah. That's unfortunate for you. So you, you don't know what you're talking about, do you? Yes, I do. Well, then please describe to me what panoramic mode on your phone actually is. That's what I just said. It's not. That's not what it is. <laughs> You're nitpicking the smallest thing. Like, that's not really the point here. Well, there's a lot more to nitpick. Don't yeah, but no, I, I just wanted to start with that because you don't know what it is. Whatever. It's all the same thing. You know what who, I mean. Who have you seen doing this? I mean, I... I, I well, hold on, hold on. My comment was that I grew up doing this. My grandfather would take me and my uncle, his son, We'd go into the forest and we'd chop down a tree and bring it back home. Because he was, despite being, I wouldn't say a wealthy man, but a man of means, refused to pay for a Christmas tree. That's he'd rather different. go. He'd rather go it's illegally chop it down off someone's property. Yeah, that's see, different. That's not doing it for attention and for the social. See, but again, media you stuff. think you think people are just doing this for attention. Where I they would are. say. While there is a definitely a tendency for people of the younger generation to take pictures of themselves doing things, doing anything, doing it, that's it's everything, <laughs> anything they do for enjoyment, they happen to take a picture of. That's that's not specific to this. That's specific to the culture. I, I, I just think, think like you said, I think a lot of people see this as an opportunity to do something outdoorsy, and they might not do a whole lot of outdoorsy things. And it's great, it's relatively not simple. Doing outdoorsy I know things is great. Well, again, you're the man who thinks in another life you could be a farmer. So let's it's not go into this. I, 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 I think this all just, I mean, you could still do it in this life if you really wanted to. No. Not yeah, once, once, once this keto diet really gets going, you can raise your own cows. Well he, told, well, he did tell us that his greatest thing about being a farmer was going to be the amount of writing that he would do. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Farmers famously stay up late into the night <laughs> working on their memoirs. Yes. So I think this just boils down to Tim is not allowed to have an ax. He's not trusted with it. It's like how he's not allowed to have like a really sharp knife or scissors. Tim, do you have allergies? I went to one of those ax throwing places. What are you talking about? Uh, he didn't really. They had to give him the soft ax, the one that didn't have the sharp side because they were too That's afraid not he was going to That's not true. I was himself. actually a relatively good marksman, all things considered. Like, basically, you know when you go to the bowling lane when you're a child and they have the bumpers? The bumpers yeah. yeah, so they gave Tim the ax equivalent of that. He had, no, like, a nerf ax. This is not about me. It's about these hipster millennials who think when they get up in the morning, what can I put on my Insta today for people to see? Murdoch then, Mayo, noted millennial. No, but he's not doing it to be seen on TV. He's not doing it to be seen on Instagram. He's not doing it to be seen on Twitter. This is my criticism, is that these millennials are doing it for this reason. The tree is an instrument uh, for their, uh, their, their, their photos, no different than the way they photobomb their food or photobomb any number of things, right? But Do you know what photobomb means? Yes, it was to blow up somebody's feed yeah, with a bunch of photos. when you put your phone in pan panoramic <laughs> mode. And take pictures and of, take pictures of anything. <laughs> Tim, I, is, Tim is so lost. On again, this, 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 this is really one of the more asinine things you've ever yeah, come up with. Like, I'm actually I, very annoyed by it. I, I, I again think you've taken a larger, like, sociological problem of this generation needing to be validated through electronic likes and comments and really just paired it into people buy Christmas trees so they can put it on Instagram. And which I also wonder I don't think is the case. I think <laughs> I would even let me let, let me finish for a second. I would even say that anyone who has a fake tree who is my age who decorates the tree would still then take a photo of the freaking tree and put it on Instagram. It doesn't yes. matter if it's fake or real. So I agree and I think that's a problem as well. 
but they're and but these kids, okay they, can you explain to us what the problem is that they're going to cut down which by the way probably doesn't gel well with you know the traditional sort of environmental protection uh, you know there are children. places you can look we're not all we're not all mayo's grandpa <laughs> illegally cutting down trees most people would go to a christmas tree farm where these trees have been grown every year to be cut down at christmas i the point is they're going out to be seen wearing their stocking cap and their puffy vest uh, to chop down a tree and show how cool, you know, oh, here's me Christmasing, here's me being in it, lame, so, tiring, so, so in a, in a... <laughs> it just sounds like you're jealous of these people who are allowed to use axes. Yeah. Would you say there's a large overlap between the amount of people who enjoy cutting down a Christmas tree for attention and enjoy sitting on a patio in summer for attention? I think that there is a definite overlap. <laughs> that people live in the esteems of others. And this is all about being seen in public, living your best life on the Instagram. And I just think it's exhausting and tiring and not good. You don't even have Instagram, by the way. No, I don't need it. So, I get along just fine, thank you. So, so how do you know what actually happens on Instagram? Because people are always tweeting out their Instagram stuff. But you never see it. You sure can still, I do. You can, you can still click, click on, on the an Instagram link and it pops up. You just uh, can't cool. comment. I know so so he only has the Instagram experience of people that he sees on Twitter. Yes. Which I wouldn't say is the real Instagram experience. No, definitely not. I don't want the real Instagram experience. Hey, you're just a poser. Paul, you had something to say? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious about what type of winter jacket that Tim wears. He's very out on puffy jackets. I kind of want to know what those mm. puffy jackets are that he's very, very opposed to. No, I'm just very curious jacket. about this whole jacket. He has some certain disdain for certain types of jackets. I'm I don't a like confused. the puffy vest. You know, people who are wearing like the long sleeve shirts and all they wear is the puffy vest. I think that's good enough to go out in the cold eye. So you think that everyone's dressing like Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future? <laughs> It, you see it a lot. And I see it. A Dude, lot. Where do you see this at? I, well, have you, seen, have, you never leave your fucking house. I go places. <laughs> oh, I got to go to the grocery store a lot more often now that I'm on the keto to get the fresh stuff. Ah, yes, the grocery store, truly the mecca of pop culture. <laughs> well, it is because every person, rich and poor, of all classes, distinctions, whatever. I'll got to go to the grocery store. Uh, I mean, Tim, I Tim let, me, let, let me fill you in on something. Uh, rich people don't need to do that. You can just get someone to go do that for you. Well, yeah, sure, if you have a butler. But I mean, that this is not, you know. You, you, you don't need a butler. You don't need a butler. How many Tim. people do you think have butlers? <laughs> have you have you never heard of like Grocery Gateway or anything like that, oh, he, Tim? It'll, I, it'll, I have, like even I, certain grocery stores will literally just deliver, deliver food yeah, to We you get our place. groceries that delivered. Is, that is so fringe. So that <laughs> it, it, it's so ir, it's so inconsequential in terms of like the number of people who do that. that it's oh, not worth yes, it. these viable businesses <laughs> are are just so fringe. If they had one person cancel their delivery service, they'd be out of business. Just done. I don't use it all the time because sometimes I go and just pick up like a few sure. random things. I will. I will say I enjoy going to the grocery store sometimes. Stick to the outside, Tim. Are you doing that? Are you taking my method of sticking to the outside? Well, there's nothing in the inside that's any good. There you go. There See, you finally produce, realize that. Produce, full fat dairy, and meat. That's the key. That's what you find on the outside. Nothing on those inside rows are really helping you out whatsoever. Not really, no. No, but there are, like, in the inside rows, there are some, some keto snacks that you can buy that are called keto snacks. Watch out for the keto snacks. It's like... Oh, yeah, all I, things in moderation, of I, course. I know a bunch of fat vegans... And they think that they're eating healthy because they're eating vegan, but they're like, oh, vegan cookies, vegan fries. It's like, no, like you're Aren't all fries vegan. I don't think so. I think there's a different like types of oil that you can cook. Oh, stuff in. I guess that's true. I yeah. don't know what I, I, I don't really get into it, but they didn't become vegan because like they don't. They Was would, it more of like an animal rights thing? No, it's not an animal oh, rights thing. thing. It's a like dietary oh. thing. They're like, I'll lose weight if I become a vegan. They like, got fatter. Because basically everything, like unless you're just eating like, fresh vegetables at all times. Vegan stuff is like not good for you. There is also- There's so many treats and they're like sweets. Tim will enjoy this. There's also a, a major trend. This is actually a trend happening in Toronto. Um, puffy vests. Yeah, well, people put on their puffy vests and they go to vegan fast food places. And they listen to the power of love. Huey <laughs> Lewis making <laughs> a comeback. <laughs> everyone oh, everyone goodness. gets on their skateboard, waits for the- <laughs> Fastest truck to drive by. Hop onto the back. Which is a ride. <laughs> That's really why they're gaining weight. They should be walking. Yeah, this is true. Anyway. So real, I, I prefer a real Christmas tree. I think my family did switch. Basically when I, 
my uncle moved, I moved, and then my grandfather, and he's like, oh, he's an old man now. Yeah. Although he still would like to do it. He has a hernia. So for a while, shout out Canadian Healthcare on this one. He needs to get his hernia, like, operated on. But it's not bad enough that he gets put to the top of the list because there's more pressing issues right. for people to get surgery. Sure. So he started chopping wood to try to rupture his hernia. <laughs> So he get moved to the top of the list. He's just pissed off about it. Thought that was kind of humorous. It ended up getting better on its own. So I guess the doctors were right. <laughs> his, his overwhelming manliness cured his yeah, just, ah! Listen, when you're from the middle of the woods in Newfoundland, this is yeah. the kind of stuff that goes sure. through your mind. Sure. Trees? Buy trees. They're free trees. They're everyone's trees. I can chop it down if I want. I don't know. I, I, again, think on this particular matter, uh, we have king of trees, Paul Shaughnessy here. That is we should true. probably have last word on just Christmas trees in general. Well, what is what does McDonald's have? Like 40 trillion hamburgers sold? Paul Shaughnessy has like 3 million trees planted. That, that's false, but... How many? Um, like 30 million. No, it's like 960,000. That's still a lot of oh, trees. Oh, then you gotta go back and get to the million club. I know. If I went back for like a, a month, I'd, I'd get there, no problem. But uh, oh, I'm, an old, I'm an old man now. My, my knees are broken. My soul is broken. We're canceling the Pat Mayo experience for the uh, month of July. We Paul's always gonna go, go Paul's to gonna go trees. <laughs> like trees. Get to the million. Uh, May. Plus. May. Send me out in May. Paul. Oh, 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 hold on, oh, Paul. Oh. Did you hear what Tim just said? I could plant trees too. I mean, anybody could do it. Do you think that Tim would like to? anybody. Out? As a great endorsement, he may really struggle with the fact that like you're living in a tent out in the wilderness all the time. It's not ideal, Tim. No, but I've always saw that show where they drop you off in like the Northern Territories or Northern BC, and they drop like eight or nine people off in different spots near each other, and whoever survives the longest in the wild first wins. I always thought I'd have been good at that show because I'm resourceful, and I'm bright, and I'd figure out like <laughs> sources of food, and I'd figure out how to like boil my water and get fire started. Yeah, you don't and have I'd to lie. do that. You have were, a cook. were you even in like scouts? Like, do you even have a no. baseline understanding of what you're talking about right now? His dad tried to set him up for Canada's worst handyman. I remember and he this. He just got cut before the show. That's disappointing. Yeah, but I think I'd be able to, to to make it work, and I just have the dedication that I'd last longer than these people. Do they keep the worst guy on? So if like, it, it, yeah, do you, uh, how do you win? Do you, is it because you get better, or is it know. because you're the worst? <laughs> You win because you're last man standing. Everyone else taps out. No, I'm that, talking about no, the no, handyman. No, no, yeah, the handyman that showed. Because I remember oh, with yeah, like I, I, the biggest I loser, don't know how they... it was if you were too good at losing weight, you're but done. All, all the fatter people would kick off like the the sort of fat people, being like, "You don't need this professional help. You can go home and be yeah. already not that fat." Yeah, you so can go like, home and be a not such a big loser. Yeah, but you also know how it is. Like with TV, they want to go with the people who are like characters, and so I just didn't fit the bill. Yes. Yeah, of course, Paul. It's hard for me to know if Tim would survive out there. He would not if survive I did, out well, there. Well, see, that's the Have thing. You watched, that's what I, was, I know what show we, I think it's called like Alive or something like that. Something like that, yeah. And it's like legitimate survivalists that they yeah. dump in. And some people have to quit after like, like two naked, days because they're dying. Naked and Afraid is way better. Well, Naked um, and Afraid you could probably do. because It's usually like, in a warmer climate. Yeah, you, you don't have to do anything. You just have to be naked and yeah. afraid. And afraid. Um, Tim could do both those things. I've never done any manual labor with Tim. So I don't, I would be able to tell pretty quick. Whether, whether, as my dad would say back in the day, is whether that dog can hunt. Mm. Um, but I would have to like do some like physical labor with him to have a sense, and then I would be I judging. Remember, I'd be judging I, good or bad either way. When I was seven, my grandfather asked me to hit some nails out of a board, and I lifted the board in the air and started trying to hammer the nails out <laughs> that way. And he walked over to my father and said, "That kid needs a desk job." And it was the last <laughs> time he asked me to do any sort of like work oh, around their house. Fuck! I wish I had thought of that when I was a kid. Damn. That I would have. The words like because my grandfather in between uh, his actual job, he'd only work half the month. You have yeah. like a cap when you're a pilot, so he would just build houses in between. So he would just didn't sit like at home drinking all day, kind yeah. of thing. Something to do, make some extra cash. It's what he's good at. So he'd hire like me for no money whatsoever yep. when I was like twelve or thirteen to pick up the trash. Like you, you you're like basically here's a board you can nail this deck in and uh, clean up the fucking trash. Yep, it was the worst. Yeah, the my, absolute worst. My dad moved out to the middle of nowhere, Ontario, when I was about thirteen, and bought a really cheap farm. And it was cheap because the farm part of it was broken. <laughs> so I remember spending an entire summer. Uh, basically, you had a coil of electrical cable, and he would hand me a stick. I put the stick through the cable, 
and just roll Bro. it and do kilometers worth of fences. Not great. Not fun? Not the most fun not, summer I've ever had in my uh, life. I could I can imagine that. Yeah, but when you say the middle of nowhere, Garen, you mean like north of Queen Street West. Yes, that's that's what I mean. You are correct. I mean, Gary's not even from the city. Well, I well, I guess when I was born, I wasn't it wasn't part of the city, sure. Well, I mean, it's Scarberia. City. It's, it's the greater Toronto area. Sure, it's close. I mean, it's it's in Toronto. It's not in Toronto. We had a trivia night once where you if had you... to name. We had a trivia night here, and you had to name the original six boroughs of Toronto. I was able to do it. I wouldn't be able to do it. Imagine going like north of like, Bloor, like Peel, for example, places like that. Like Peel is really t- not Toronto. It is, but it's like its own ind- individual place as well. It's not yeah, really. Yeah. Isn't well, like the region of Peel? Isn't there yeah. a region Peel like that? Yeah. Durham County, is that something? Uh, Peel D- Durham is not region, part yeah. of Durham region. They're all just regions. Yeah. I don't know really how this works. Good geography. I mean, the actual there. boroughs of Toronto are Scarborough, North York, East York. Old uh, Toronto. Old Toronto, uh, Etobicoke, and... Mississauga? No, Mississauga's not technically part of Toronto. No. Where's Old Toronto considered? Like here? Old I think Toronto? the downtown core, I believe. Yeah, Old Toronto is basically north of the Gardner Expressway. Uh, you you're talking places. Like, there's, there's not a whole yeah. lot north of the Gardner. I mean, there's nothing. Okay. There's, there's very little south of the Gardner. Yeah, like like the intersection of like I don't know, like University and King would be like the heartbeat. Yeah. The actual right, so, so, cool, so yeah. right where we basically are, are sitting right, right now. now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The other thing I wanted to put, and I'll give this to Paul. I've never really seen Tim do much manual labor, but when we were in college, uh, you and I, in right. like 2011, let's say, Tim came up to visit me. And my couch has six parts that he stayed on the sofa bed. He couldn't figure out how to put it back together. It was he also got lost on the way to McDonald's, and it was only two blocks down the street <laughs> with no turns. How's your how's your depth how how's your depth perception? Because you have to kind think, of you have to get a general idea of like how how far is six feet and like how far is six feet from everything. So how many steps does it take to be going six feet and what does six feet look like? Because well, Tim, Tim you have somebody who comes in and checks all would, of your trees and stuff like that. And if you have too many or too little, you have to like replant, and that I that, that literally depth, kills your day. I reckon my deck perception is excellent. Well, Tim is like 6'3 or something like that. He could just put his feet just at on. the one tree and just <laughs> lay down and just plant it where his nose would be on the ground. That, that, you know, you, you're, you laugh, but when I have to like measure distances, like when I'm like playing golf, trying to figure out how long a putt is, I'm like, am I as tall as this putt is long? And that is sort of how I think through uh, length. Do you pull out those little miniature reading glasses from, uh, from Pat's wedding? <laughs> I To really inspect it? I do that. At, not not on the golf course, but I do use those when I'm reading tiny print. Why don't you just make the print bigger? Eh, you know, sometimes I can't be bothered. I'm not going to do that. Why but I actually have actual find his tiny glasses. Well, he, well, he's a millennial. He wants to be seen using his tiny That's glasses. True. They're all very trendy right now. Yeah. No, I, I, it's I the only reason know. to use them because you could just make the font bigger. And like we've done physical labor. Remember when we carried that hockey bag full of booze? <laughs> that was heavy. <laughs> It was it was incredibly heavy, but we were at Bonnaroo. <laughs> yeah, but we were just starting. Like we were in no like Yeah, we went we went and got all of our booze and put it into a hockey bag and carried it to the campground. Oh, and, we, and that and that was a the well known dis- manual labor of getting ready for two four weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I can do things. I'm not useless. Carrying well, luggage does not count, does not qualify as. You don't understand uh, how heavy this thing was. Manual it labor. Sausage fingers. It, what it, it, well, I bet you it was heavy, we were in Tennessee yeah, no and doubt. it was so heavy. Sure. And like I woke up the next morning, it was like 40 something degrees. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, probably like 3,000 or something. But anyway, uh, it was like 100 and something. Yeah, it's like 100 and. It's 15, it was It was bad. Middle of July in Tennessee, very, very hot. I woke up and my hand was double the size of my other hand. Jesus. It was a pretty heavy. We finally we finally found a, someone in a golf cart who came by yeah. and we rooked them into it. And the best thing about going to like these music festivals is everyone there is a gigantic coward and a hippie. So you can just basically do whatever you want. Like just if you bully people into stuff. Yeah. So we just walked up to the very front and just moved the stakes and put our tent there. So we were right by the entrance. Everyone else in like these forms, like, whoa, man, like no need to push. Just walk by them. Fuck off. Just moving cool, out. Oh, man, you make your own rules. But like we, like when we saw, well, we were hanging back at Springsteen because it was just. So many writers. 
Well, it was just, it was at that point of the night, I was just so drunk, I had to lay down. Me yeah. and my friend both had to have a quick lay down during, during the boss. Tim was all fired up, just like the boss was. Guy doesn't take a break. It's true. But when we saw, like, Beastie Boys or, like, TV on the radio, that kind of thing, like, you could just push people out of the way and get to the front if you really wanted to. You're like, whoa, man, like, calm down. It's like, fuck But off. not Mo. People were very protective of Mo. Yeah, Mo. Like, nothing you've ever heard before. They're just like fish. <laughs> that was the direct quote that I got about Mo. Nothing you've ever heard, heard before. Just, just like I mean, fish. Think about I've heard of Mo. They're not good. Put it that way. Just like fish. Also, not good. It's an experience. Do you know that people get really triggered when I tell oh. them that the Dave Matthews band sucks? Oh, well, this is. I had this take. Did two you tell weeks this ago? to Jeff? Because this would upset Jeff. Which, no, no. Jeff is actually out on Dave Matthews because Jeff and I had the discussion. I was like, why is it that only Jewish people like Dave Matthews? It's a, it's, it's a heavy demographic. It's really. Biz- but, like, is he Jewish? He would have nice to guy. be. Friendly to um, I don't know, actually. I don't know enough about him. But this was my this was my take is that Dave Matthews I'll is just that. for people who don't have the mental fortitude to be a fish fan. It's oh. easy fish. Because they still follow him around the country, but you don't have to sit through like seven hour concerts. Just, I think he only just, plays for like four. The people who like followed fish around at that concert were just the lowest people on earth. Look, man, you can like what you can what you want to like. That's fine. Uh, yeah, but I you, just you have to how. like something so much that like your life is following around yeah, this terrible I, band. I guess that's it's a little extreme to like validate your personality through a band and drugs, a lot of drugs. That's probably the bigger draw. Really. I always thought it would have been cool to be a roadie. <sighs> I mean, Some you just said you, labor. <laughs> you just said you can carry luggage, so that's step one. Like I could tune a guitar and go on tour with a band and stuff like that. <laughs> I think I could have done that. What What do you know about like electronic? Equipment, oh, uh, sound gear. You I'll know, pick up a couple of books and read them. How hard can it be? You, you I pick sp- up things pretty quick. I can pick up things pretty quickly. You've had panoramic mode on your phone for ten years and don't even know what it is, or whatever you call the mode when you turn your phone to the side. Whatever that mode is, that's what I meant. Taking a picture horizontally. Sure. I mean, I've <laughs> seen your never, hands. Surprised he doesn't have a slicker name than that. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous all right what's your next topic okay what do i have here on the list next topic was why does so it is christmas centric and it's like i as people may remember from a previous show i am of the opinion that new year's day is the best day of the year for holidays so i don't understand why christmas gets so much more credit over new year's and i, I sort of want to stand if i'm using that word correctly for new year's a bit because here like the parties are better than the christmas parties there's more Th- wait, 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 wait. Sorry, just, just to clarify before you get into this. New Year's Day or New Year's Eve is New your favorite Year's. holiday? New Year's. I mean, I prefer day to eve, but the whole New Year's experience. Okay, but if you one. prefer New Year's Day to New Year's Eve, you can't really justify parties as one of your examples. No one well, parties on New Year's Day. Christmas yeah. Eve and Christmas Pe- day people are, people more, are dead yeah, New people Year's are, Day. Well, I think that's why Tim likes it, because everyone's on the same energy level as him. Everyone's just like, uh. They're all Tim Allen from the 90s? <laughs> uh. No, but like, that, that would take too much energy. I would have that kind of energy on New Year's, on New Year's Day at least. I do. And look, like the sports on New Year's Day, objectively better. Meaningless regulation basketball games on Christmas Day or the Rose Bowl. Tim, Sugar most Bowl people aren't day. sitting around watching basketball on Christmas yeah, it's just, Day. They it's just, just a aren't. filler. It's just something okay, you gotta have on the background. Sports are better on New Year's Day. The New Year's Eve parties are better than the ones you have at Christmas time. Uh, the day is better. There's no family, oblig- like the st- type of obligations that you have aren't the same. Uh, it's a day of rest instead of a day of stress. You don't have to think and think and think about it and be bombarded with stuff for New Year's the way you are at Christmas. It's sort of like it's forgotten, but it's the jam. Uh, it, it's so much, and I don't understand why New Year's doesn't get the credit it deserves. Because what it really what sort is. of credit? It's I a mean, day that people are hung over. Also, I would say that in terms of, let's let's just isolate and, Christmas for a second as this is a specific religion's holiday. It's sure a very popular religion's holiday and it's obviously a a, a giant in north america gary sure and, and that's but that's not not important like anything us, happening in the usa which is generally speaking like the pop culture magnet of the world it's gonna get a lot of buzz at the same time christmas gets a lot of buzz it's a lot of buzz it's on, it's on a lot of people's lists oh um new year's day is literally a worldwide celebration of the new year like except, I don't except for in China. Sure. But I, I don't know how you could you could want more appreciation for a day where people literally stand out until the clock strikes midnight and then all across the world fireworks go off. 
What what else do you want? Well, it, it's completely different as well because essentially New Year's Day, as I mean, Tim is an indoorsman. Yes. He hates being around people. You don't generally spend New Year's Day with anyone. You're just at home by yourself, watching college football. Yeah, or at the levees. The what? The New Year's Day levees. What are New Year's Day levees? Uh, they're in every city. Toronto would have them as well as anywhere else. It's there are parties that go on on New Year's Day in the morning and up to noon where they're hosted by you know, the mayor's office and they're hosted by all the big groups and core organizations in the city where it's free food and drink, uh, oftentimes alcohol as well, to every, anyone who wants to come. Who just is going what? to these I've things? I've never heard of these. You've never heard of a New Year's Day levy? Oh, my is, goodness. Is this for like a 90-year-old person? No, I've been who to the, the levies. Who the fuck would yeah, go to these? Do they have these at Rotary Clubs or like? Rotary Clubs. The may, uh, the c- City Hall will have one. Uh, you know, you'd have one at uh, the legislature. You would have one. The at, Legion? At, like big churches. You'd have one at who, who would ever go to one of these things? People who enjoy. Who have not. Free stuff. <laughs> who enjoy free stuff, don't want to do anything and have no friends. I want to make friends. Well, and it's also just a good it's a good way to ring in the new year with like a mimosa and getting to shake the mayor's hand and getting to eat. Like I went to the North British Society's one here, which is another word for like the, so it's the Scottish, uh, the Scottish levy, and they had real haggis and they had real authentic shortbread, and it was tremendous. And I like I cannot recommend levies enough. They are an integral part of what makes New Year's a hidden gem. I'm not saying that New Year's needs to be bigger than Christmas. That would be foolish. But New Year's doesn't get its due. When it's over, people don't think about New Year's again until New Year's, basically till after the next Christmas. Whereas, you know, people start thinking about Christmas in like November, for heaven's sake. So I, I just think that New Year's Day deserves significantly more standing than it gets. Uh, I just looked this up and it's just like the most on brand Tim thing ever. It's like people haven't done this shit since like, I guess they still do it like, uh, you For know, as like sake? a as a tribute to the past, but like this was a thing that they did back in colonial times, and people would like get together in like Manitoba and eat caribou. I'm glad, I'm, <laughs> it's I'm like it's really it. like this is old timey shit, Tim. Look, I I will say this. Um, That's Jeff's line. You're stealing his trademark line. It's true. I should mess up my hair. <laughs> like lean that way. Uh, um, or scream like Edward Munch. I think. I, I think you're correct in the sense that if I really have to, if I really have to say which of the two days I enjoy more right now, I often enjoy New Year's Eve okay. more than I enjoy Christmas. Well, what but the difference is New Year's versus Christmas is a friend's holiday versus a exactly, family holiday. Exactly. Um, so and if, I would if also you like say, your friends more, then you're going to enjoy New Year's. More. Yeah, and I and I think too, it's like a it's an age thing. Like I, I think if you're under the age of thirteen, you love Christmas. If you're you know over the age of thirty and have a kid, I think you love Christmas again. Like I, I just we'll think see. there's this is my first Christmas. Yeah, with there a you kid. go. Report back. But he's not old enough to care. Yeah, it's true. You might have to be four, five, six before you really start getting some joy out of his joy. Well, my wife did ask me if Tim had kids. Tim, would you tell them that Santa's not real right away? Absolutely not. I see you're a liar. No, I think that that's one of the magic of Christmas time is for young kids to believe in Santa Claus. I got one year believing in Santa. That was it. Okay. Well, so what, I would five, like to see it. Six? Five. I was told by my uncle that Santa was not real. Uh, and then, I, I, and then, and then I, he laughed at me for a while while I cried. I, I believed in Santa <laughs> he Claus. He went to go cut down a tree. Yeah, t- Tim still believes in Santa. Um, no. he, 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 before he was doing keto, he was modeling himself to be a... Mall Santa. There you go. Um, but really, can you can you not understand why people think about Christmas like six months or six weeks before Christmas actually comes? It's it's a very large corporation based holiday. Like it's it's sold to people, and um, it, it also lasts longer too. Like Christmas Day is one thing. You spend it with your family. You do whatever. Maybe you go out that night. We usually go out that night and hang out with friends, kind of thing. Sure. I much prefer Christmas Day because New Year's Eve. And New Year's Day, like New Year's Day is whatever. Like I am legitimately so yeah. hungover, I sleep all day. Exactly. So New Year's Eve, it's a twenty percent day. One every five years, New Year's Eve is that's, awesome. That's Most true. New Year's Eve are awful, awful, especially when you get older. I think it's just about reaching a point where you've lowered expectations. Like I, in my late teens, early twenties, just had like four consecutive terrible New Year's Eves. Gross. And then I realized, like, at 23, 24, I'm just going to hang out with, like, 10 friends and drink and have, like, 
I'm not going to head to Nathan Phillips Square and stand around with a million people. That sounds That's awful. awful. Um, so I think there's ways to like circumvent the bad ones, but you're right. It's, it's literally a holiday where 20% of the fun, or all the fun takes place during 20% of the hours. And oftentimes it's a, it's a crappy day. And I'll no, even on the day of the 31st, like watch the news as all the world rings in new year's. Like I love watching like the BBC for a while. So, so once again, like, your so, plan so your is to new watch year's party is to stay at home and watch CNN. Well, you watch the news until the levee opens at three in the morning. Uh, and the then you go get your haggis. Like 7 a.m. So it's like, only who is up at 7 a.m. on New Year's Day? Old people. Maybe I haven't fallen asleep. <laughs> really yet. old what? people. Do you do, do you do that after your polar bear swim? You know what? It's uh, funny you should mention do you go, that. Do you go with the people from your gentle aqua fit class or what? <laughs> All right. All right. I don't think people get that reference. <laughs> no, I'm sure do. they do. There's been memes made about it. So I wanted to throw out the reason that Christmas is actually better especially as a party type thing. Christmas parties, much better than New Year's parties. Tell me a Christmas party that was not a lot of fun. I don't know. I know, people who, I know people whose Christmases have been ruined at Christmas parties. Th there is one person that I know whose Christmas is ruined every single year. At the same party, I, I, by someone else different who he takes slight with and has to go outside and freak out. But other than that guy, everyone else has like New Year's Eve parties. Or uh, Christmas Eve parties, they're fun. They're, like you're yeah, not you're sure. not out till like three a.m. They're a bit more casual. Boxing Day stuff. That's always a lot of fun. I go to a Boxing Day party every single Boxing Day. It's and there's no pressure on it. Like you go, some people are watching TV uh, like downstairs. Some people are watching TV upstairs. Other yeah. people are segregated off talking. Like there's just a whole bunch of people. It is around. a very it's casual. low. Yeah, it's it's a low effort holiday. In that Plus, sense. Boxing Day is the start of Pat's favorite sports tradition. Oh, don't even talk about that. There's also people in like, children's hockey, International Children's Hockey Day. <laughs> oh, 17-year-old hockey player. I love this tournament. It's the like, weirdest thing of all time, man. People get into the fucking world juniors. It creeps me out. And, like the, the hot takes that people have on it is really weird. It's yeah. really weird. No, it makes me uncomfortable. I agree. Um, either way. But like so, but you also have like the twenty first, the twenty second, the twenty third, the twenty fourth. There tends to be stuff going on on those days that you can go do. You can pick and choose what you want to go do. If you go, it's usually a good time. Like I said, it's very low pressure. It's very casual. Yeah. There's always good food. In the same way, though, I mean, I, to be honest, I always just kind of lumped New Year's Eve and Christmas together because, like you're saying, it seems like in terms of meeting up with friends or meeting up with family or having events to look forward to or plan around, it really does start the twenty first. And if you're going to let yourself have those four days ahead of time, you might as well just say, yeah, the 31st is also in this same two-week stretch of things where I'm just going to go out a lot and meet a lot of people. So, I mean, it really, it could, under that, under that qualification, it could just all be lumped into the same week anyway. Well, I would even throw the, like, the New Year's, the, the biggest hang-up on New Year's is obviously transportation. Yeah. That becomes the most difficult part of the entire thing. It's less of a problem, like, during the Christmas season, because it's not... It's surge pricing. Well, the surge pricing, or if you're calling a cab, just the availability to get a cab is very low because everyone is actually out. It's like going out on Halloween when everyone's yeah, out. Yeah, that's true. Like, there are certain times where just it's overwhelming to try to get anywhere, and it takes you forever to get anywhere. At least over the Christmas season, like, like when my wife and I divvy it up, like, if we go to, like, back-to-back -back nights with parties, something like that, like, I'll drive one night, she'll drive the next night kind of thing. On New Year's, like, no one wants to drive. Yeah. Like, then you have to find a way to get there. You have to find a way to get back. And, I don't know. It seems New Year's is just far more of a hassle than all the Christmas stuff. Christmas, like I said, underrated type parties at Christmas time. I keep on that. And if you like your family, then you'll really enjoy that, Christmas. That is, that is very key to this equation, yes. I mean, you're right. Christmas does last longer. In fact, there's 12 days of Christmas, and perhaps I should rank them definitively for this show. No. <laughs> Number one. What is your next topic? Uh, next topic, I had a listing of the best foods to bring to a Christmas potluck, and also I have an annoyance with wind chill. So what would you like to talk about? All right, let's talk about the uh, the potluck. So Christmas potluck, and I think this can kind of go into just general work potlucks. Remember we used to have those at Fantasy all the time? We did. So you have to bring something. I think it depends on the level of effort that you want to put in, uh, your income level. Sure, I think time of the event is also important because for those specific potlucks it was like 
two thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, which kind of throws a wrench in the whole situation. Well, that's usually when it is. Yeah. Like, what, very, did Cam, what did Cam bring? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Cutlery, what did, probably. What did, what did Gabe bring? Nothing. Also nothing. Yeah, they they weren't big on uh, contributing to the potluck. Do but, you think that Cam drank the leftover eggnog in people's glasses? Um, I don't recall there I don't being any. I think eggnog. there was eggnog. I do remember at one particular Christmas party, Cam must have polished off nine cokes. Nine cokes <laughs> and ate two. Like they ordered pizzas for us one year, and he finished two pizzas to yeah. himself. <laughs> and then there was none left by the time like people finished recording their show and yeah. walked out of the studio. <laughs> well, I remember he was he was dead set off the hop to get three to four slices to put to the side for Morenzi, which was nice. But then he proceeded to, yes, he, eat two pizzas. I think he actually ate the Morenzi slices too. He might have. I begged you to see me first. I begged you. I begged you. It was just like when Gabe was using the palm olive oil as like the shower stuff. That's right. I remember you talking to me that he was using dish soap. Yeah. He was using and dish Harvey's soap. Harvey's napkins. Yeah, Harvey's napkins Harvey's instead napkins. of a towel because yeah. it's like washer broke or something like that. He couldn't clean his towel, so he had to use napkins from Harvey's. That sounds like it, that actually sounds like something Tim would do. That's doesn't get much lower. Yeah, that's true. All right, so Tim, what would you bring to a potluck? Because I have a pretty stock answer on this for me. I but bring I, vegetable trays. Oh my god, really? So you bring a thing I'm that, that no one wants? You, you bring the thing that no one wants? Well, because I'm on keto, you see, I've got to have <laughs> vegetables at my disposal. So I'm thinking about me when I bring this. I need to make sure there's things because right now there's just very little of that stuff there I can have. Stay I'm thinking carrots. about me. So you've the been Tim Anderson story. So you've been on keto for three days. Let's say, cool. but before, oh, sorry, before the this you know extended four day period, you've been on a keto diet. What did you bring to potlucks before that? Fruit trays. Man, you just bring stuff no one wants, huh? Fruit trays, eggnog, the things again that that people are going to want. They'll be happy that you bring. Have you ever considered making something? Yes, deviled eggs. I think that's a great thing to bring. Look, I make I, tremendous deviled eggs. I like, am not personally black. a fan of deviled eggs, but sure, that's. That's a fine thing. I but guess. that's oh, that's also a very are... that's a very selfish thing to bring because so few people like deviled eggs. That's true. That means Tim, true. that means Tim is just bringing deviled eggs so he can eat all the deviled eggs. No, in fact, I would go to my way only to have like one because I want people to eat them because they have one they'll be hooked. Well, that's the thing you that's have you you have one and then you can bring the rest home later because no one else had them. Oh no, believe me, I, this, I am a very very good cook when I put my mind to it, and the things I cook people like. Well, let me ask you this. And you have to be perfectly honest with me, okay? Okay. How many times have you actually ever brought deviled eggs to a potluck at work? Zero. One one time. Zero. No, one time. Did they all get eaten? Uh, you know what? I do not recall. The, answer, several is, years ago. the answer is no. I like to bring, what else do I like? Uh, I like to bring, uh, or I like seeing brought bacon wrapped scallops. I like. He's really big on bacon wrapped scallops. Oh yeah, I, I like. I, mean, I like bacon wrapped right. scallops. That but. to me is the goat uh, hors d'oeuvre, uh, so to speak. You so would would you say uh, not 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 a dig at you? Just wondering. Uh, would you say your ideal potluck is pretty much just appetizer oriented, or no, no, would you say there's a mix of actually like main dishes? Like, uh, I, I mean, you can bring your main meatballs or go to. Everybody likes meatballs. There's another appetizer. Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, but you like meatballs as a meal, like in a, you know. In a, Should, yes, really, I understand that. But I'm just saying, like, in your head, does a potluck involve some sort of, like, roast or turkey or some sort of main protein? And then everything can. else is an appetizer I, or is it just bring, straight appetizers? I think it would no, have I to be straight appetizers and snacks. Like, oh, I think you're going to have, I like, lesser forms. So the thing that I generally bring are basically, like, mini burritos. So I'll make a whole bunch of mini burritos. Those are good. Filled with, so I make some vegetarian ones that are just filled with beans and rice and yep. the vegetables and everything like that. Then I'll make some other ones that have like turkey, ground turkey in them, ground beef in them, ground pork in them. And I usually try to put, well, I try to put bacon in most of them as well, along with beans and the rice and everything like that. I did that. That's what I used to do at Fantasy Every Year. I make like 25 of those. Sure. Take me fucking forever. But I always enjoy them. People seem to enjoy them. You have to yeah. eat them. You need somewhere to keep them hot, though, is the thing. You don't want to eat them cold. Yeah, once beans get cold, it's not. Yeah, Most. I like. I've been to potlucks where people bring like a chicken or even a turkey. That's great. That's supportive. Or a ham or a, like a sliced ham uh, for sort of like a main salads too. You get people need to bring salads, whether that be potato salad, uh, garden salad, uh, you name it. Uh, coleslaw, like that's that's a good go to. And desserts. 
Don't forget desserts, people. Yeah. Homemade pies, fruitcake, the oh, staple. Yeah. God. People, people really hate fruitcake, man. No, no. Cake people, and devil some eggs. people do. What a guy. Some people do. Be loved at no, the yeah, yeah. Some people do, which is not many. A, a, many va- a, va- a vast minority of people enjoy fruitcake. A great I potluck think dish. I miss, I miss fruitcake more than anything else right now. Yeah, so but we've nice. already explained to you that your opinions are like 1% opinions. You're a 1% opinion. Yeah, we've, we've 100% done fruitcake on one of these Christmas episodes before because that seems, that's, that's a first day terrible Christmas take. Um, and it's not even, I don't even know how that's something you could convince yourself that people actually like fruitcake. It's, it's so it's often everywhere. made fun of when anybody brings up Christmas in anything. And yet it's sold at every grocery store and every convenience store and every bakery at Christmas time. I wonder why that is. Oh, you're, given you're, that the market demands it, that market signals are instructing these. Let, let me let me ask you this. Let me let me ask you this. No, let me ask you this. What's not sold food wise at a grocery store? Things that are incredibly unpopular. Like? Well, you can name it. Well, I mean, name something that you think everybody hates and it wouldn't be sold. I mean, there's enough people who like yeah. it. Yeah. Like one percent of people. Might as well have it there. Because no. the people that like fruitcake are like weirdos like Tim who would harass the manager. And I also it think wasn't there. Fruitcake is one of those things where because it's seasonal, if you do have people who actually like it, they hoard it. Like I'll you're buying you what, two or three fruitcakes if you like fruitcake. It was like um what what's it called? Like passion fruit. There's another one, like these like really like bizarre. Oh, fruits. I like dragon fruit. Dragon fruit, Dragon that's fruit. exactly what it is. Um, so when I worked in the produce section, uh, we would get like three in every month because no one ever bought them. But Tim would see them in the store and be like, well, market demands that they're here. He would just be buying old dragon fruit. Yeah, I mean, it had th- been there for three weeks. Something to be said for that because turtles are incredibly popular and I don't see the appeal of them at all. I think they're a very overrated thing. Are turtles a Canadian thing or is that ubiquitous? Um, I'm not actually sure. Anyway, I guess we should describe them for a moment. It's a chocolate. It's a, I'm trying to. What is the nut in it? Chocolate, is it, peanuts, and caramel, right? Yeah, it's yeah, actually quite good. I, I like. I yeah. like turtles. Turtles. Slow pokes turtles. are better. Rah, 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 rah. What is? Hot, uh, slow pokes are better. The Nielsen box of slow pokes better than turtles. I don't know what a slow poke is either. Is those are those Nielsen boxes of candy. You know that you have the rosebuds and the macaroons and oh, the. This sounds, is this another thing that ninety year olds eat? Rosebuds are like rough. very poor. Very poor candy. No, they're made by them. Nielsen. I was going to say, good. my go-to uh, potluck dish now, I've stolen this from my girlfriend's family. Very unhealthy, but delicious. You just go to their house and steal it yeah, and bring just, it? just take it. Um, you take like a, a baking tray. You cover the bottom of it with cream cheese. Ooh. Uh, you cut up well, a good. chicken, like a, an already that's cooked good. chicken, uh, or you shred it. Put a layer of the chicken on top. Then you take blue cheese dressing. And Frank's oh hot goodness. sauce. I'm out. Oh yes. Mix it together. And you put oh, that on top, and then you put. <laughs> it's like a good dip. Yeah, it's a. It's called chicken wing dip. Yeah. Oh my goodness! I am making this this evening. Remember, don't grease the bottom of the pan. Yeah, everyone knows that story. Ha ha ha. What I what would you dip in the in the chicken wing dip? Nothing. Are you just I'm just eating it with a spoon. With a spoon. <laughs> I'm just oh. eating it with a spoon because all that stuff is keto friendly. I mean, you're not Maybe wrong. Not it's not very healthy though. I have to get real blue cheese. Well, it's, it's, everything keto is healthy. That's the key about it. It doesn't matter. All that matters is staying under the carbs. Paul? That's what makes it healthy. Yeah, there's there's extents to that, Tim. Like, it's good. It keeps you within your diet and your diet plan. But, like, if you – a lot of people have lots of, uh, like, heavy whipping cream, which is fine. Fat is energy. So I bought some it, of that. Yeah, I, I honestly keeping I find that stuff, especially at the beginning, like your goal right now is to lose weight. So it's like you don't need to like ingest tons of fat because you're trying to feed in to your actual body fat to uh, to, you know, if you consume a bunch of fat, your your body's going to use is going to burn through that fat first before it actually burns fat from your body. If that makes any sense. You were just talking about eating what Gary described as unhealthy chicken wing dip, like a soup. Like I've I ran mean, into it is, tra- it is more, I would say more of a solid than a liquid. So it's not that you couldn't eat it that way, but I would oh just say God, generally tortilla chips. I, I'm not saying it's, I'm not go. saying it sounds bad. It sounds delicious. But if you oh, ate, it's, it's it's exceedingly unhealthy. Like if, if you ate a baking tray of that. 
That's what. Oh, well, baking tray, sure. No, that, that's that. what he said. Probably. No, no, but I could 10, make a plate of that. 10,000 calories. Yeah, somewhere. If you made a yeah, regular it's all size. About if you were carbs, all right. That's what I read. It's all about grams of carbs. That's so you, had no, you, I, eat you two have no bricks idea how to Philadelphia works, cream cheese, you're not going to lose weight. You realize that just eating stuff with no carbs in it is not going to cause you to lose weight, right? Well, it will as long as you also stay below the caloric intake. Yeah, which you're not. You're clearly is, not doing. Is, yeah. I would oh, say yeah, like, I would say roughly getting, getting seven to eight bites of this puts yeah. you. Over if you're the top. not getting to two thousand a day, like there's no way you could make even a small plate of what Gary and just described and not go oh, over sure, two thousand calories. No, sure. it, th that plate alone would be over two thousand calories. No, I don't. Yeah. Know. You don't know how to calculate calories, do you? I don't want to know. Do you, have a, <laughs> do you have a food scale, Tim? I'm buying a food scale Good. this evening. You should do that. It's it's yeah, a, that'll help little. you. That'll help you a ton. Yeah, but I the think... strips you said don't waste money on the strips. I mean, this is turning into me and Paul talking about keto. But don't buy the strips either, right? Well, I, I, mean, think, I, I, think I bought them might... just to know whether I'm in ketosis or not. But I did it like that's what I did at the beginning when I first started doing it. Now I kind of just know based on how my body feels, and like I don't have to weigh food because I know what it looks like. But at the beginning, it's it's good to like weigh your food, kind of have an idea of what, because you'll be surprised how little, when you actually weigh your food, how little 20 grams of carbs is. It's pretty small over the course of the day. That. So you, you're not concerned about keeping your, cal you are concerned about cal keeping your calorie intake down, yet you don't know how many calories are in things, and you're drinking like whole cream. And I'm not DCs. drinking whole cream. It would be a treat for a dessert would be whipped whole cream with like, like a couple of blackberries or something. But the whipped whole cream has a lot of calories in it. But it has no carbs. I understand that. But if you're not, if you're just going to load up on shit that's like bad for you and filled with fat and a ton of calories, nothing's well, really yeah, going to happen. No crap, but I'm eating like tons of broccoli and tons of cauliflower and the riced cauliflower and, you know, uh, Brussels sprouts, stuff like that. Buy that's all you're eating. Spinach, arugula, and then like your like lots of meats and cheese. For for dessert, what I actually do is uh, buy buy yourself like a a nice like protein powder shake or something like that, and then you can kind of mix it with your heavy cream and and water and stuff. Make yourself like a protein shake as like a diet as a dessert supplement. If you well, if you have a if you have a sweet tooth, I, I've been using DCs as that. Like I've really radically cut back DC consumption last few days to like four a day. For a day. Why well, just try working? How many were you having before? Oh, eight, nine, ten a case. Jesus Christ, Tim. All right, well, let's move on from this. This is this is really weighing us down here. Literally. Yeah. I mean, he thinks it's going to be the opposite of that, but that's not going to be the case. Do you have any more topics, Tim? It sounded like you had one more. Yeah, I don't understand why people are obsessed with wind chill. It's dumb. I don't know like, what oh, this is. Hold, 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 is the temperature. No, no, oh, hold, wind chill. Hold, okay. hold on. Uh, actually, I want to ask Gary on this. Are you in or out on Egg Dog? I'm out. I'm out. Oh, no, I'm, I'm as in as in can be. I feel like that has a lot of carbs in it, Tim. It does. So you want to get the light stuff, obviously. To me, eggnog is just an excuse to drink dark liquors. And I would rather just drink the dark liquor with, you know, Coke. A, a DC? Just by itself. Tim mixes eggnog with DCs. No, you don't. No, to me, brandy oh. is the drink of choice with eggnog. Eggnog and brandy is fantastic. But this is going back to your like take that you like warm beer over cold beer. When you're what? Warm, that room you temperature. Oh, sorry, room temperature beer over cold beer. But you don't even drink. To, England. That's to be fair, though. Yeah, you've never fucking been to England, Tim. To be fair, a lot of people. Have, they've all told me the same thing. A lot of people would say like an ice cold beer is a nice reward after a day's work of manual labor. And as we've gone over, it's not exactly something Tim. He has like carp he might get carpal tunnel after a long day of writing or typing. It's fair. Anyway, go on about wind chill again. I don't understand why people cite it as if it's the temperature. It isn't the temperature outside. Like in my journal, when I write down the temperature each day, I write the actual temperature, not the wind chill factor. Like, that's so silly. It's like, people are like, oh, it's minus 26 outside. No, it's not. It's minus 12. And the wind chill is 26. Well, that wind chill doesn't mean anything important when it comes to the actual air temperature. It's just to me. Yeah. Well, no, no. So you're way off on this. Wind chill is the only thing that matters because you, if you actually go out of your house and you're outside, you do not, ex like, if it's minus 26 with the wind chill or it's, like, minus 10 anyway, you're going to experience the yeah. minus 26. I feel like when the weather says feels like negative 20 means a little something. 
uh, as opposed to the almanac you're apparently writing. Yeah, you, you know the internet's not going anywhere. You can just look this shit up. And when you look it up, it'll tell you what the actual temperature is, not what the wind chill, what it quote unquote felt like. Yeah, very uh, honestly, who cares what the yeah, weather why is? Why do you need to yeah, record why, why does what anyone the temperature why does this is on a daily basis? I like to look back on things. I like to know what the, what the weather was each day. I, I find that to be uh, interesting curiosity. Have you ever actually gone back and looked at the stuff? Absolutely. I've gone Why? Back what, 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 per, what purpose would that serve? Like, oh, I wonder when the first snowfall was, or I wonder when the first day below zero was, or I wonder the first day I had to scrape was, or I wonder what the temperature was on this Christmas or on that Easter, or, you know, I like to look at those things. Can, I, can I throw out a random date and you can tell me what the temperature was that day? Well, I'd have to go leaf through my journals to find out, so. Well, it's chronological. But if you were to give me a date, I'd be able to look it up and see what I had written, where I was that day. All right. Well, what, let's g give us a date. Uh, July 16th, 2017. Okay. Well, I'd have to go find my 2017 journal. I don't have it next to me. Like, if I had it next to me, I suppose I could leave through it. It's not here. Like, not next to me. Um, it was, let's see, a high of 23, a low of 21 in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Okay, cool. Okay. Thank you. So I didn't need to write that down. I actually found it faster if I wanted to really go back through. You know, it's really good for you to note these sorts of things. Like, it just this, sounds this, like this. you want to live in the fucking past. No, it's just, it's a nice release at the end of the day to sort of reflect on the day that was and to make, take stock of it and make some notes and some I mean, interesting factoids. I like to staple in the receipts. Of things that like I maybe went to a concert or something, I staple in the ticket or I went to an event and or I got or I bought something out of the ordinary, so I stapled a receipt to it. Like I like to do that kind of stuff. It's cool. You staple receipts into your journal? Sometimes. Like if it's a really like a weird thing. Oh, I went out and I bought this like new TV. Oh, I might staple the the receipt so I knew what it would cost back then. Oh no, I was I was uh signaling for for Gary and whether he could hear or not. Oh, can you hear? Yeah, he's, he's coming in faint, but... Okay, cool. Yeah, we, that we, might be for the best at this point. Uh, he's talking about taking his, like, is it because you want to save them? Or you want, like... It's, it's funny like how tax, you get... Tax it's purposes, or...? I find, it's funny how no. you, you get on people. Like, essentially, you're just doing Instagram without, <laughs> like, the <laughs> social aspect of it. You're just being even crazier. No, I'm just interested in the day that was, and... Now having Who the you're, fuck cares? You're keeping your own Facebook memories. Well, I can never remember. Like 10 years from now, I will not remember what I did on a particular day. Why? Well, if I look back if you don't day, remember it, it's probably not worth remembering. Or you just put it on Instagram, then you just look. There you go. No, but life's, life's too short. And like, I, if I wanted to know what I did on like August Life's 1st, too short. So you should take an hour every night and write down everything you did that day. So you can spend six hours, 10 years from now, searching for that page. Paul. I mean, let's get Tim to go find a couple of these journals and like, we'll just pick some dates and see what no, he wrote in there. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not reading my journals. <laughs> not doing that. I think this could be a great segment. This guy could be its own show. Like its <laughs> yeah, own podcast. Exactly. I think every, every day he hops on the podcast, we should get him to recite what he was doing on this day. 10 years ago? 10, seven, six, whatever. He'll run out of them sooner or later, but. Just, just to get a sense of how far we've come. How long have you been doing this? Oh, uh, since I was in grad school. So, my so grandmother did it her whole life. Like she's always been doing it, and my father picked it up too. And so then I sort of picked it up from them. So it's a family tradition. Yet you hate Christmas and like New Year's. I don't hate Christmas. I love Christmas. I just think Christmas is over commercialized and over. I mean, to me, I mean, like the spiritual stuff is stuff I like about Christmas the best. That, that, I, that, I, that part is absolute trash and nonsense. That's but, what I call Now, I like all parts of Christmas. Don't get me wrong. I so really the, like the, the commercialization of Christmas is what you don't like, but you love New Year's and sitting home and watching people celebrate New Year's coming in in different time zones. It's so cool. Like, oh, here's the fireworks coming off the Sydney Harbor Bridge to welcome in the new year. And then, like, you can go to Wikipedia and, like, Wikipedia says the year is, like, partly this year and partly that year. That's kind of cool. And then you get to see, like, the fireworks all over the place. And then you get to see like, oh, what was the first event that happened in this year? And you know, it's, the, it's just really cool stuff. And I, I don't know, maybe I'm a nerd about this stuff, but I always think New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, you know, it's the end of an old year, start of a new year. There's something like really, really neat and cool about it. And I just don't think it gets its, uh, its due. 
Let's talk Christmas movies then. Because we did ask if you people wanted to get into the draw for 20 DK dollars, they could smash the like button for the episode and leave the DraftKings channel in the comment section and tell us their one favorite Christmas movie. Just one. Just one. If you put more than two, you're not going to be drawn. You're just like, I, I asked for something on one show, be like, rank these two players in fantasy football uh, this week if this person sits. And these two are good, but this guy's better than both those no, guys. But no, someone answered like, I don't think either of them are good. That's it. But like you rank every player, so make them 80 or something like that. Like people are fucking morons when it comes to this stuff. Anyway, Christmas movies. Uh, I released my list, which is the only list that really matters because I actually have taste and most people just don't. So that's a problem for a lot of people. They don't like someone like Tim doesn't know he has bad taste. Like Tim is like, incredible. Tim, in, Tim, in, Tim, is in, Tim is incredibly low, so he has very low tastes. As that's someone not who, true. You do. I can tell the difference between champagne and sparkling wine, and you can't tell me who's low and who isn't. Can you actually do that? Of course I can. No. One's far more earthy and has the smaller bubbles. You don't know what that actually is. Because since you've never actually had you, what was the last time you had champagne? A month and a half ago. When was the last time you had sparkling wine? Like, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. Live in a fancy yeah, life. Yeah, you're living the fancy life here? I rather like sparkling wine. Uh, th- that is, a, and champagne is like after whiskey would be my alcohol of choice. So like you're you're a big Prosecco guy? No, I don't particularly like Prosecco. How about I, wine spritzers, spritzers, no. spritzers? <laughs> no, I mean... I like champagne, like real champagne, like Moet Chandon. Like, I love that stuff. Fancy. He goes from when he wanted to cater his party, he wanted his like most expensive thing was chips and ruffles dip, but he also wants champagne. Nothing nothing pairs better with sour cream and onion than a good champagne. (laughs) Oh, I can't do champagnes. I I just get headaches. I get a massive headache. I I can do one glass, but... don't even like it all that much. It's no, it's, delicious. it's, it really, that I will say is for all Tim's like things people do for fake reasons, just to have other people like them. Champagne. Think highly of them. Champagne. I think Probably is why high Tim does Like we said, Tim barely even drinks. It's true. So, no, no, I don't drink, I don't drink often. It's true, but I rather like champagne and I've always sort of liked it. So it's a non drinker's drink. Maybe. I mean, the other friend that we have who doesn't drink very often, he loves champagne too. So perhaps that that's true. We have another friend that doesn't drink. Or who drinks very rarely, yes. That makes two in all of Halifax. Oh, is it that guy that can't read? Yeah, well, I, you, you keep saying that. I don't agree with that. We well, can't. He's illiterate. Anyway. He's a grown man. He's illiterate. No, he's not. But anyway, I like champagne a lot, too. And, like, I learned a lot. And I studied champagne, like, online and stuff. Sometimes. And I realized I had a taste for it. So. All right. Anyway, still. So I'm not low. No. You 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 are pretty low. You I mean you talked about your party planning stuff on a cuss corner from the recent past, and it was pretty low. No, it was a down to earth party with all. It wasn't. This, it was it was, all- it was low. Paul described it as a homeless person's party. Yeah, he was being hyperbolic. He was not all dressed up for a homeless party, like you were talking about. Yeah, like he veg- told us we had to wear like tuxedos and have like, like no. the lowest food. Be like, all right, well, if <laughs> I'm gonna dress, if I'm gonna dress up like this, I'm expecting like I'm gonna have. Some you know, I food. want a charcuterie board. Like or there has to be no, a reason for no, me. No, 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 no charcuterie board. You want a plastic wheel of cheese and a plastic wheel of meat. You, you put don't like, show up to a Christmas party dressed like Gary and is right now, for example. I, I would know. dress up. That's like that. I mean, that's. I kinda, mean, I'd probably dress up. Maybe like not this. Christmas Day, but yeah, Christmas Eve. Yeah, box no, you go to a party button down vibe. and a tie. If you're gonna serve me, if you're gonna. The thing is, Tim doesn't act. See, when Tim shows up like button downs, ties, like the clothes that he has, he looks so wildly out of place because they're not like. Oh, if it's I, not semi-casual. Well, if I showed up wearing like a shirt, a tie, or a jacket, or a suit, I would look great. Because I would have top-tier stuff in fashion and just look fantastic. He's got his tux from seven years ago. He has his tux from like 1932. Yeah. He's just wearing clothes that he's had for 20 years. Good fabrics and clothes don't go out of style. Do you style. have like a casual sport coat? He basically just oh, yeah. dresses He basically just dresses like McLovin from Superbad. No, no, like I have a houndstooth sport coat, for example. Like, he ha- like all of the shirts that he has with collars are like the it's 70s huge, colors. Yeah, sure. <laughs> he no, looks like he should be starring. He should, it looks like he's on one of the passengers in the movie Airplane. No, I have several sharp like the button down collars and I, I have lots of nice stuff. Button down collars? Low. I feel like Tim should be a sweaterman. I like sweater vests. A lot of sweater vests. Can't be too puffy, though. No. no. You don't want a puffy vest. No. It's, not, it's not a sweater vest. Can't do it. Um, all right, so Christmas movies. 
We have litigated this in the past. Yes, we I have. Thought, I, yeah, I thought, it, I but I, that was probably like four years ago. And it may have been on a different platform. It, well, it's still on the Pat Mayo Experience audio podcast. If people want to go, but you through, know what I mean. Want to go through the archives of that? So my single favorite Christmas movie is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's one of my <laughs> ten favorite movies of all time. The movie is amazing. Someone commented to me, it's that you know. No one's ever heard of this movie. And I just told him, like, you've never heard of this movie. And I agree. It's not a, it wasn't a super popular it's not, movie. Yeah, it's it's not the most popular movie of all time. But, but I would a, say a lot of people have heard of it. It's a Christmas movie. It stars both Val Kilmer and Robert Downey Jr., written and directed by Shane Black, and it has a naked Michelle Moynihan in it. What, what more could you fucking want? Corbin Burnson's in it. Oh, damn. I mean, wings, kiss, kiss, bang, bang. That's all he's got. And a cameo in one episode as another member of the Q continuum of Star Trek The Next Generation. Tim, would you Seinfeld say you can't too, like anything Kramer Shane Black's to. written or part of because obviously none of it lives up to Nice Guys? Movie of the Millennium. God, what a trash movie that is. Oh, my gracious. I ain't thought about that trash in a while. Like, that should be a horror film because it's so horrific. That is one of the most unpopular takes that you have. It's just not a good movie. It's a, it is, it's it's a, a very great movie. movie. <laughs> Russell Crowe is terrible in it. Like, there's nothing about that movie that's redeeming. Like, that should have been all left on the cutting room floor. And it didn't make a whole lot of money either, for obvious reasons. None of Shane Black's movies outside of Iron Man make a lot of money. Yeah, well, no, duh. Nothing makes as much money as, like, Iron Man and that's that whole genre. Well, that, that's his movie. He yeah. made Iron Man. And Iron Man 2. And Iron Man 3, I think. Well, he wrote them or directed? I believe he... John, I, I believe think John he, Favreau I believe he wrote them, right? them and then he ended up directing them. Okay. When Fav- Favreau ended up moving on to like right. Star Wars or okay. something like that. I think he's, he's doing that Mandalorian series, isn't he? Isn't yeah, that him? That's him, yeah. And like Jumanji, the reboot. Is that him too? Uh, probably. He did um, the one that was in space that was like Jumanji. He's already come and gone. What? The Jumanji reboot came and went. It did, yeah. There's another. There's there's another one though. There's a sequel coming out in like two weeks. Oh God! You Sounds you like watch more either. sports on cable than anyone I know. And you watch. How are you not aware of what movies are coming out? That's all. Of half of movies. commercials during sporting events are just ads for the television shows and whatever network you're watching and movie promos. I guess that one just didn't absorb. I guess. He's too busy. There's a commercial that keeps coming on during football now. And the show hasn't come out yet, but I believe it'll come out in the new year. It stars Rob Lowe. Oh. It's a fireman show. Yeah. It's like 911 Austin or something yeah. like that. He was a fireman during 9-11 in the city. But the city's just <laughs> taking too much out of him. And he has to bring his son to Texas. But then he goes and runs the fire department down there. But he only wants the best. It looks like he's. Pl- it looks like it's not Rob Lowe playing it. It looks like it is the Grinder playing it. Right. Like it the looks- way that he's playing it is how he played the Grinder. It's. It. I don't know who would ever watch this show. It looks like the Reno nine one one version of a fire hall. Yeah, but like it's so over the top. Like we only need the best in this fire department. Like I'm pretty sure the guy's name is like Gary Fireman. <laughs> <laughs> like, I assume that's what the character's name, and it's so outrageous. Must need the money. Uh. Are you looking for the rest of your list? I was looking for the rest of my list, yes. And people are upset about movies like A Christmas Story, which is a terrible fucking movie. I mean, I made the point that Home Alone 2 is better than Home Alone 1. So that's, only, that, that's only because your hero, yeah. Trump, is in Home Alone I'm, 2. I'm, no, so, no. I'm so taken... I, I've definitely heard that this is take the before, only reason why I still don't you, understand why you no, have the this No, the New York take. setting is a far better setting for that movie. Uh, the, the pigeon lady is a better character than the guy with the shovel outside. Uh, and it's pigeon like pigeon lady that, reminds him of himself. You know, we all see part of ourselves in Pigeon Lady. And an Academy Award winning actress at that. Uh, you know, New York is a far better Christmas city than Chicago is, if you know what I mean. It's sort of like a city more built for it. No, I, I, you know what? I don't know what you mean. Can you please explain I that? I don't know. When I think of like Christmas in the big city, I think of New York. I think of Rockefeller Center and... Uh, yeah, step you know, up Pigeon your game up. Step your game up, small town of Chicago. <laughs> I mean, Chicago has its Christmas movie. I mean, that's what the Griswolds is, right? That's a Chicago Christmas movie. I, I think New, New York, the, the, you know, the, the types of traps that Kevin lays in the abandoned house of his uncle, far more ingenious, far more clever than the ones in the, in the other house. I mean, there is so, not that I don't like Home Alone 1, because of course I do. Again, Sticky Bandits, better than Wet Bandits, a better name, better idea. Like 
there's just so much more that provides sort of like juice to Home Alone 2 than to Home Alone 1. Like, it's one of the rare instances where I think the sequel most definitely outstrips the original. And I will stand on that corner and preach that 10 times out of 10. And everyone also deep down knows I'm right. They may not want to admit it, but they, they know. It's just the same movie. Yeah, it's the thing. Like, I... <laughs> Look, I but one of them has Trump in it, and that's the one that <laughs> Tim likes. One does Trump's have Trump. Um, growing up, my grandfather only had like six VHS tapes, and one of one them was, was Home Alone, Alone 3. Two. No, oh. thankfully, not Home Alone 3. One was Home Alone 2. So I did watch Home Alone 2 probably more than I've seen, seen Home Alone, but we're talking both in probably the 20 to 30 range at this point. Um, I Again, like you said, I, I can't really find all that discernible a difference between the two movies. What has Tim Curry in it? Sure, Tim Curry's then go fantastic. Watch fucking, then go watch Rocky Horror then. And Rob but, Schneider. Oh God, yeah, that there's a reason great. not to watch it. I But I would say at the very least, Home Alone 2 is a pretty empty cash grab. I guess there's some emotional relevance with Pigeon Lady, but... You know, there's a there's an and actual the sweet store. ending to Home Alone that kind of ties the whole thing together. Store. John Candy's in Home Alone. Um, sure. I, I just think Home Alone's a better movie, but... Nah. No, either way, don't. neither one of them. Secret. Neither one of them. All that great. No, but they're Home nostalgia-based movies. List. It is. Which it's I think number a lot nine of, on my list. My I would list really say, ends at number eight. Yeah. I would say for me, unless unless we are getting into like critically acclaimed movies that happen to take place during Christmas... A lot of the movies at the top of my list would just be like nostalgia-based movies that I watched a lot, and that seems to be a thing that where people go with. And I'm Christmas talking, Story is a big part of. I'm that talking about like what's the, what are the best Christmas movies? Sure. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, a clear number one. Trading Places, a very clear number two. Yeah. Bad Santa, which I watched last night, number three. It was just awe, and I was like, oh, here we not go. Not Bad Santa two. I can not, tell you that. Yeah, not Bad Santa two. I saw that opening night. I was there opening night at the first showing of it. You've told and, this story uh, oh so many God. times. We all know what the God. best part of, if you had to name the best part of Bad Santa, what is it? Uh, it's John Ritter it? telling Bernie Mac the story of him catching Billy Bob. Yes. In, in, <laughs> in the change room. <laughs> to, to be fair, everything Bernie Mac is doing is fantastic. The amount of oranges he's eating, the amount of cigarettes that are in his ashtray. You just it's an outlandish character. So those three, uh, eyes wide shut, I probably have it a bit higher, even if it's just soundtrack related. One of the better soundtracks of all time. You know, uh, it's the worst Kubrick movie. It's not the no, it is not the worst Kubrick movie. Barry yeah. Lyndon is worse. I think it's the worst Kubrick movie. Have you ever seen Barry Lyndon? I've seen all the Kubrick movies. Have I actually you, don't. Have, like have you ever seen Barry Lyndon? Is I've actually seen my every question. one of them. Yes, and I, I don't I, like. I only like like two of them. That, that's a hot take. I like. Full Metal Jacket, and I like Doctor Strange Love. There is a very, there is a, there is a case to be made that Doctor Strange, not uh, Full Metal Jacket, is probably the worst one, which is really saying uh -huh. something. It's a good bar to set because that's really only half of a movie. Sure, the first half is really good. The second half is pretty terrible. Uh, so, no. Eyes Wide Shut, number four, fantastic movie. Tim just doesn't. Tim gets freaked out by sex, so he doesn't like Eyes Wide Shut. It's like you've never it's been a to, weird movie. It's not it's that weird. Movie. It's like you've never been to a mask sex party. Yeah, it's a, a, how silly That's of That's why he doesn't like Christmas. I mean, I have. It's great. That Those are the kind of parties you want to go to. Good times. Uh, Christmas Vacation, number five. Scrooged, number six. And then Die Hard, number seven. I'm good with Die Hard. The Ref, a movie I love. Sure. I'm just a big Dennis Leary. Yeah, I was going to say, there's there's I, not really that many Dennis Leary vehicles you can really go to. And that's, but that's the a, one? That's, I would say that's, I mean, you can watch no You can watch No Cure for Cancer. I like he's in the Sandlot, but he's not Dennis Leary in the Sandlot. So no, he's Dennis Leary in the Ref. Yes, he he's is. also Dennis Leary in Wag the Dog. Yes, he's just smoking cigs the entire time. That's and in Draft Day, I've never actually seen is Draft he Day. Draft Day? He's the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. Oh yeah. Uh, Home Alone at number nine and Elf at number ten. Now there was two. Someone had mentioned In Bruges to me, right. which would be number two on this list. But I don't know if it's a Christmas movie or just one that takes place at winter time. Yeah. Yeah. Because if it was, if we are considering In Bruges a Christmas movie, it is number two on this list. As In Bruges, as like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and In Bruges, two of the 10 best movies of this millennium. Though, I mean, I think In Bruges is a fantastic film. You eat the Canadian. I eat the Canadian. Oh, Canadian. Fuck. <laughs> it's a great part. It's a really good movie. I, I, I don't think you could say it's a Christmas movie, though. 
Is that the best Ray Fiennes performance there is? And I'm including Schindler's List and English Patient on this. I think it is. He's really good in that movie. Yeah, I don't know. Question. They're all really good. Like the fat Americans who you, know, you don't want to go up there. And then they're all very offended. That, oh, just because I'm big, you don't think I could walk upstairs? Then there's just a throwaway at the end. Like the Americans have a heart attack trying to watch up. And it's great. Fantastic flick. Um, so yeah, In Bruges would move to number two and bump Elf off that list. Like Elf is fine. I, yeah, it's, it's not something, I, like, I think it gets in. That's one of those movies that everyone loves so much that it almost makes me hate it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it has Bob Newhart in it. And someone wears a Wayne Crebet jersey in it. They do. Which I'm sure Tim yeah, loves. They do. The, like, the it, amount of Jets fandom in that movie has not been lost on. The, the kid, I think he is always wearing some piece of Jets clothing. Yes, I believe that's right. And like James Caan is in it. Like that's a star-studded cast. It's not a bad movie, but it's also yeah, not a great movie. It's, like it's people fine. want to put "It's a Wonderful Life" on this that list. Imagine so watching bad. that more than once and not. I watch yourself. it every it's like Christmas. Three and a half. Hours How have you long? not blown your brains out? I love that movie and the uh, Alistair Sim version of of uh, A Christmas Carol from 1951. I love that too. Oh, I was gonna say your, your, your money's not here. It's in, oh, it's, it's in Fred's house. It's Steve's house. That's a great movie. And as I've said before, I, I think Mr. Potter is the unsung hero of that movie. You think the bad guy is the good guy? Yeah, we've been over this. He just stands for you know steady uh, monetary policy and uh, good financial. Uh, management. I I had no Not doubt in my mind if we asked you what your top three movies Christmas they Day. would be. No, no, no. The original, no, yeah, it's a wonderful life. The original Scrooge, uh, probably like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Yeah, all movies that no one ever fucking wants to watch again. You watch it when you were eleven, you're like ha ha ha, this is great. Then you try to watch it as an adult, and be like, I where are the razor blades? Like this is awful. I don't agree. The movies I have listed are just more enjoyable movies, better rewatchability, and they're just good. They're good movies. Yeah. Boom. Victory, Pat Mayo. No, oh, your, oh. List, your list making needs a lot of work. And as oh. someone who's a professional list maker, I can assure you, uh, you have work to do. Well, I mean, I've showed people your list and the most common, like just random people, not people who like follow Twitter or watch the show or anything like that. Yeah, people, random pe people, sure. people, people in my day to day life. And I ask them to look at the list and this is what they say. And they ask me if the person who made it has brain injuries. <laughs> like that's a, that's a common. I don't, I don't believe that. Well, you should believe it's it. It's so nice that you get to, you let this guy make his list. Yeah, like people think that like I'm doing the world a good deed by letting, publicizing Tim because they think like I'm really helping him out. I don't know. I've seen people on Twitter tell me, ask Twitter why my lists aren't banned. And other people say because Twitter believes evil should exist on earth. Like, I don't think that your analysis is correct there. I think people like my list. People like that you make lists and release lists. That's true. People do like that. The content of the lists, uh, not so much. Well, they are definitive, do. though. They the are definitive. The ratio of likes to like people yipping at Tim on his list, like that ratio is like absurd. When also, you look at like Twitter, like usually people will get likes on their things. Tim will have like three likes by people trolling him and then like 47 people telling him he's an insane person. It's also important to note that whenever anyone says they agree with Tim, it's never just, this was a good list, I agree with you. It's finally a good list. Or way to go, Top Cat, keep killing it. And then that Tim's too. like, this is great. <laughs> I'm not being trolled by this comment. No, I have You fans. make good there, lists, TC. There are some French Canadian people who are always big fans of what I'm up to. And there's, there's a whole list of people that are friends that like will always like give me a like and say, oh, good work, Top Cat. I assure you, Gallipo and company are definitely trolling you. Yeah, they most definitely are. They're, pa they're passing it back and forth between them in case the other one didn't see it so they could have a good laugh. They they also like writing oof, which I think is just like, oh my God, that's horrible in <laughs> French. En français. Shouts to those guys. No, I, I think that, that I think I am a, a preeminent list maker. And so I feel like I take no backseat to anybody when it comes to discussing the creation of lists. Well, this, I mean, what about Liam Neeson? I mean, he is always making lists. Are, are you saying like, days away from Christmas that you are a better list maker than Santos Claus? Well, he doesn't make yes, lists. Yes, but I don't have to he check it twice. Lists. I guess. Yeah. 
I don't actually have to check has naughty and nice list. Do you think that now, like with Mila, you can't have naughty and nice in today's day and age? It's very unpc that you would woke have those, and unwoke. The, yeah, woke and unwoke, or those who live their truth, like Tim, or just people who live in reality. I don't live my truth. I mean, oh, this you, entire show you is you've been living live your, your truth, truth yeah. pal. I, I don't see it that way at all. Exactly. That's why you're living your truth. Yeah, you're not denying truth. reality and living your truth. No. Yeah, when the, when the facts come in, Tim changes his opinion. Doesn't seem like that, does it? I will say, for movies, um, in terms of the classics that are basically unwatchable, because I agree with you, anything that's certified as, you know, in the, in the category of It's a Wonderful Life, which you could not pay me enough money to watch the entire thing in one sitting. Um, the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the cartoon... It's short great enough. because it's short. Yeah. It's only like 24 minutes. Yeah, I, I will give you that. So your nostalgia gets you through it. And it's not like it's bad anyway. It's just a Dr. Seuss book. Charlie but Brown is better. It ends out, it it ends quickly enough where your nostalgia is still going strong by the time you finished it. Oh, remember that guy I told you about who couldn't read? Thought it was Dr. Suss. <laughs> you wrote the book on winning. Dr. Suss. No, Char the Charlie Brown, those specials, the Charlie Brown one is my, my, my absolute favorite. I prefer the Grinch to Charlie Brown. And then yes. Garfield would be second. And you don't see that one as much anymore, but the Garfield Christmas special was top shelf good. You know why think. I don't like Charlie Brown? Because he's a loser? Why? Yes! He's a fucking loser. Well, but that's what makes him so endearing. And no, Snoopy he's not endearing. So cool. He's just some guy that would just be bullied around. Fuck off, Charlie Brown. Yeah, yeah, but in the end, Charlie Brown's a fucking buzzkill. Yeah. But Charlie Brown's realized, like the Tim of those cartoons. No, but at the end they realized they shouldn't have bullied Charlie Brown and that actually, you know, the tree he picked out was nice. And like his dog Snoopy is amazing and I think he's great. And so he, he he needs a prop for people to like him. I think I And people wouldn't even have to move the football away from Tim. Tim would just miss the football. I think every year we should induct a new Christmas character into the fucking Duds Hall of Fame. Charlie Brown? Charlie Brown is your induction this year. My induction last year was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So Rudolph. we just have to come up with one next year. Ah, so Rudolph and Charlie Brown, the first two members of the fucking Dud Christmas Hall of Fame? Yeah. Perfect. Good grief. He's gonna crack himself up. <laughs> Live, living his truth over there. Tim, who would you induct? Uh... Who would I induct? That's a good question. Maybe that elf who thinks he should be a dentist from the Rudolph show. That guy's a dud. I'm going to induct him as well. I was going to say, why not the little brother from Elf? Because he's a Jets fan. Yeah. And that or movie good. was made in 2004, so we know what his next 15 years or, look like. Or, or Ralphie. Because that's a bad character in a bad movie. Yeah, I really hate a Christmas story. I hate it. I hate Miracle on 34th Street. I just hate it. What about White Christmas with Danny Kay and Bing Crosby? And oh God, what's the one with Michael Keaton? Jack Frost. Oh, Jack Frost. <laughs> Good heavens. <laughs> There's got to be a horror one I'm missing here. There, there is a Jack Frost. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, but There's I think a Jack Night Frost style. I think Nightmare Before, Before Christmas. Oh, there's also Black Christmas. Black Christmas is what I'm thinking. Which I believe they're remaking this year. Oh, really? Yeah. I I don't like Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like James and the Giant Peach. He's Again, that's on it. that's a my weird buddy, movie. That, that, that's a movie for my buddy Patterson. He's real into those. It's also, is that a Halloween movie? Is it a Christmas movie? I don't really know. Yeah, it's bad at both. All right, I think Trading Places, very underrated. Fantastic movie. Who doesn't like Trading Places? If it came on, Tim, if you were at, let's say it's December 23rd, and you only have two channels because you probably only have two channels because you're you. And on one channel, there's It's a Wonderful Life, and Trading Places is on the other channel. There's no way you'd be watching It's a Wonderful Life. You'd be watching Trading Places. I would be watching It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, my God. Like, that, that is, that is, that's, that's why you're in the fucking opinion. dud Hall Hold of on, Fame wait, for No, Christmas. I wouldn't, because you said December 23rd. And I only watch It's a Wonderful Life on December 24th. So in that instance, yes, I would watch Trading Places instead. Okay, let's just call it the 24th then. Oh, then I'm watching It's a Wonderful Life. I like the black and white. I like the stories. I like, you know, the James Stewart character. I, I don't know. I just only one of those movies has Jamie Lee Curtis's naked breasts. So. And another one has Eddie Murphy. Also that. And Dan Aykroyd and those two Tim characters who and pit them against dog. each other. <laughs> it's a great movie. It's fantastic. It's fucking movie. hilarious. Tim rather watch a wonderful life. 
Give your Jimmy head Stewart a is now. a bad actor, right? Like everyone accepts that. No, I, I believe he's an so. Yeah. Actor. He's not an amazing. He plays the same fucking character in every movie. If they were to list the top, oh, oh, who, who, who? No, he would not be one he of them. Be not, no, he, he would not. Be on oh, everybody. My vertigo is getting to me. Who is this woman? <laughs> There's no one who. Do you think a director at any point went to Jimmy Stewart and was like, "Could you, could you try an accent for this?" Can one? you not talk like that? Oh, I, I don't know. Ah oh, oh. the moon is up there, and I want it down here. Ah. Oh. There's an argument that he may be the greatest American male actor of all time. No, that's not true. It's not my argument, but there's who, no who, who is making this argument? Then? Jimmy Stewart. Lots of people I've seen make that, and honestly, lots no of people. Point. Name one. I have seen it on various name lists. one you fucking know what, person. You know Tim, the best who has made part this argument. of Jimmy Stewart trying to get people like underground to think Jimmy Stewart is the best actor is he couldn't even mask his voice. So it'd just be someone coming up to you whispering like, I, th I think uh, Jimmy, J Jimmy Stewart's the best American actor of all time. It's like, who are you, Jimmy? Yeah, you are Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. Oh, man, Jimmy Stewart. Pass. All right, that'll do it for Cuss Corner. Unless there's like a quick hit you had. If you give a Secret Santa gift, Tim, what is it? Uh, I would give a Subway gift card. Oh, my God. How has no one murdered you? Because people appreciate these things. No, they don't. You know, I mean, if you want, I can go through my 12 days of Christmas definitive. No, right? we're not. We're not doing that. I, I want to know what like an. How much is the Subway gift card worth? Twenty five dollars. Oh, got, my God. So not only do you get someone a shitty gift, you give them for twenty five. We've bucks. gone over this. He likes doing this because he gets the you, free stuff. No, we, we went, five dollar gift card. Yeah, we, yeah. Went, we went through, but he can't have. Oh, somebody. by the way, I saw somebody the other day purchase a gift card with a gift card. I thought that that should be not be allowed. You should not be allowed to do that. That should be banned. The idea that someone gives you a gift card and you use that gift card to buy somebody else a gift card. Uh, that does not sit right with me at all. Why wouldn't you just give them the original gift card? Because it probably wasn't full. Yeah. You probably used it once to buy a sandwich, but then you wanted to get someone a gift card. You're like, well, I'm not coming back to Subway for another three years. I might as well use the rest of this gift card and then make up the rest for 25 bucks or something. Yeah. I don't don't like it at all. What are you going to do with your Subway gift cards now that you can't no, get no, I'm not talking. Like, I saw somebody with like a mall gift card using it to purchase a gift card for somewhere else. Oh, that makes sense. And I was yeah. like, that, that's not right. Like, that gift card... Yeah, that's not gift. right. You give people at your work Subway fucking gift cards, and they think you're the that biggest jabroni me, on earth. To me, that's regifting. That's what that is. Like, people are laughing at you behind your back when you give people these sorts of gifts. Give them an iPad or something. <laughs> you're going to give someone an iPad at Secret Santa. This is like that Parks and Rec episode where they gave away free iPads with that company and went bankrupt. Yeah, or, or Michael Scott when he wanted Entertainment to get... Entertainment Or when he wanted to get Ryan the, the iPod. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone took yeah. it. That's Tim, do you prefer... Uh, Secret Santa only exists so you can give the most expensive gift and make yourself look by far the best. People will be mad, but they'll be so jealous and know that you're rich. Tim, would you rather do Secret Santa or Yankee Swap at a Christmas party? Well, I've never done Yankee Swap, oh. and I, it sounds really mean, so I would go with Secret Santa. How does it sound really mean? I mean, it is mean. The whole it, like it's an it the spirit of it is not it's in, it's like, literally it's just a game it's about consumers. Yours. Yeah, you get yeah. To pick, you get, you to get pick. the best thing because it's your turn. Yeah, it's it's truly it's a baby boomer game. It's my turn. I get the best thing. You'll get your okay. thing later. Okay, boomer. That's you, Tim. Undercover boomer. Oh. He, he lives his truth as a boomer. Tim once said that boomer is the new N word. Quote. I did Tell not me you say, didn't that say that. Terrible. I didn't say no, that. I didn't. Some, some people. Have so said someone it, wrote that article. That was like, oh yeah, my some god. Fool, yeah. Some fool wrote that, and I remember just thinking, oh my god, what's wrong with people. And Tim was like, I agree. <laughs> glad I glad someone said yeah. it because I wasn't. We going were to. all thinking it. <laughs> all of us of a certain generation, we're all thinking this way. Some might say the greatest generation. No, after the greatest generation. That's true. Right. If they're so great, why are they all dead? <laughs> The generation after the greatest generation is the silent generation. Well, did they all go to the Milford Academy? <laughs> no, but like someone in their mid seventies uh, is uh, is a, is a silent generation. They're not a they're not oh, a boomer. They're about to be real silent soon. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Cuss corner, it's cuss corner. Cuss corner, it's cuss.
Oscar's corner He's got the hottest takes with the highest stakes He should be president of the United States But it's Cos Corner, it's Cos Corner, Cos Corner, hee 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 hee